Welcome to the Lenten Bible Study Series with the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. We will be spending seven weeks studying together and focusing on curriculum with the Vital Congregations Initiative of the Presbyterian Church USA. The Elkins Park Presbyterian Church has been invited to participate in this endeavor to discern what it means to be a vital congregation. Now, when we agreed to participate in this, it was the end of 2019 and the world was very different than today. In the process of training and equipping our church leaders, in reconfiguring what the program may look like under the realities of 2020 into 2021, and looking ahead, the start of our program was a little bit delayed. But we are thankful now in February of 2021 to finally dig into this two-year program of discernment as we walk together as a congregation with partners from our Presbytery and the National Church as we seek to reaffirm what it is to be a vital congregation. Now, it's an amazing affirmation and compliment to be included in this program, which is well-funded, which has staff that are on the ability to respond to our needs, which has curriculum that we can access, and which has lots of resources, not only curriculum and funding, but also people, real people who are responding and working with and communicating and mentoring our congregation. So as we begin the study together, this is week one of seven, so I'd encourage you to follow along. We will also be communicating with you if you're on our church email list with these study guides that will help you follow along. They also include questions I hope you will answer on the back of each one. So as we work together, I would invite you on our Facebook on our YouTube channel to comment in the chat section of these videos and respond to some of those Bible study questions. You can also email or call or reach out to me as the pastor and share a conversation about your responses. Hopefully at some time in the near future, we can even have small gatherings face-to-face -face and continue some of these discussions. As we, as the congregation of the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church begin this study, if you're not a member here or you don't worship with us, you're still welcome to watch and participate. We would love input and we would love challenge and discernment and accountability. And we invite you to also be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit as whatever ministry you are involved with is also seeking to be vital. As we begin our time together, please join me in prayer. Creator God, we thank you for this opportunity to enrich ourselves to explore what it means to be a vital congregation in the ministry of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the resources provided by our national denomination, by our local presbytery, and by our congregation and its leaders. We ask, Lord, that as we together as the body of Christ study scripture, ask hard questions, compliment ourselves and affirm what we're doing, as well as see some of our weaknesses and be challenged to grow, we are excited. We ask that you continue to be present with us through the guidance of your Holy Spirit, that you allow us and equip us to be more like Christ our Savior, and that through the powerful work, Lord, that you are doing to still be at work amongst new and creative things, as well as reaffirming the foundations of our faith, we ask that you guide us to better be your church. We ask this all in the saving name of Christ. Amen. So week one, which is today, we are going to be saying the first of the seven marks of a vital congregation. This is going to be lifelong discipleship formation. I want to define that for you as our study does. So lifelong discipleship formation is defined for our study as from the cradle to the grave, seeking to be formed for right living with God and with all people, as well as faith seeking understanding, cultivating wisdom, and actively following Christ. It is discipleship awakened and engaged in the issues facing today's culture. It is formed and strengthened in the community of Christ and permeates our daily practices and daily living. So in the context of the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church, we'll be talking about what usually we refer to as adult education, Christian education, our discipleship program, our Sunday School for Children and Adults, our Kids Club, any form of ladies' morning or evening Bible study, the men's morning Bible study we've had on and off in the past, opportunities for Lenten and Advent devotionals, the time we spent in the year-long study of reading the Bible together today, every single day as a year-long Bible devotional, 
those who come and pick up copies of the upper room and use them as home devotional tools. So this is an exploration of what does our church do to equip us from the moment we enter the ministry here to the moment we leave it and go to our heavenly home. How do we, during the duration of our lifespan, engage with scripture, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit, with one another in ways that make us better disciples of Jesus as we seek to truly fulfill the call to not only share the good news and baptize believers to the ends of the earth, but also to love God and to love one another. And as we fulfill the call of the church to ensure that evangelism is successful. So when we talk about lifelong discipleship formation, it's going to touch on all that I've mentioned and much more. We're going to focus on this scripture reading to frame our discussion. I'll be reading to you from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So this is an account from the book of Acts of the very, very early beginnings of the church, immediately following the events of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended like tongues of fire upon those who had been waiting, as Jesus instructed them, waiting upon this gift that would be given after his death, resurrection, and ascension. And these early disciples, now referred to as apostles, and the close followers of Jesus during his earthly ministry are gifted with the Holy Spirit, burst out into the city of Jerusalem, and start sharing the good news of Jesus Christ as Savior in a multitude of languages, and they're understood by those who hear them. And many of those who hear respond and say, yes, I want to be a part of this too. I want to know more about Jesus. I want to be saved from my sin. I want to have the gift of eternal life. I want to be a part of this thing called what becomes known as the church. And that's exciting. And that continues to this day. So the question is, how is our particular congregation fulfilling this commitment to lifelong discipleship formation in our ministry over the past few years, in our ministry today, and in our ministry yet to come? So it's this opportunity to reflect on what we have done well and what we've struggled with, the things that we love and want to continue and things maybe that we can leave behind, we have this unique experience now by using videos and Zooms and other technological advances to share our educational program, our discipleship formation ministry with those who can't physically be in the same place and same time together. It's broadened some of our connections and in some ways limited some of our other connections since we are not gathering face to face in each other's homes for Bible study currently. And then we need to talk about the future. What can we do in the future to continue to not only enrich our own congregation and its members, but to broaden what we do so that when others come here seeking to know more about Christ, we offer programs that are inviting, welcoming, and digestible to them as well. So in the study guide that we will share with you via email, or you can reach out to the church office and request a copy in the mail or email, there are some questions on the back. I'm going to share briefly those questions with you now and encourage you to pick one or more of them to answer, and again, to somehow share those answers with the church community through the Facebook chat, through the chat underneath our YouTube videos, through emailing myself, through picking up the phone and corresponding with one of our members or myself about these questions. So as we think about lifelong discipleship formation, we need to consider what is necessary for lifelong discipleship formation to take root. Our second question is, what leaves us skeptical, fearful, or unwilling? Our third question is, in order for lifelong discipleship formation to succeed, what would need to change in our community's life? What may need to change in our home life? And what may need to change in our daily life? 
question four asks us to name how our church community helps to nurture and equip each one of us for lifelong discipleship. This is where you can make a list of the ways you believe we offer program, ministries, resources to ensure that each member, no matter their age or level of faith maturity, has access to things to help them better form their life as a disciple of Christ. The final question is, name a pivotal time when you grew or you were challenged as a disciple in our church. This is thinking and giving testimony to a particular time when a Bible study, a sermon, a prayer time, a conversation, an encounter, a devotional, something in the life of our church specifically made you grow in your faith as a disciple or challenge the way you saw yourself as a disciple of Christ. Now, this might be a more personal time of sharing. You may only want to disclose to myself or another friend of the church. But if you're comfortable, you can also share it publicly. So as we continue to walk through these seven marks of what make a congregation to be defined as vital, this week's focus was lifelong discipleship formation. So I encourage you to look at that passage from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, to read through the study guide, to answer the questions, and to reach out to myself and others at our congregation to continue this discussion. And we will engage in the study of the seven marks of vital congregations over seven weeks through Lent, so beginning this week through Holy Week. And afterwards, we will continue this discussion for up to two years about how to ensure that our congregation is practicing a vital ministry in the name of Christ. Thank you for joining me.